Internet safety has been a top of mind in recent months with a renewed push for Congress to pass the Kids Online Safety Act. Our next guest has been working diligently to address Internet safety and data protection. And joining us right now is Frank McCord. He's the founder and executive chairman of Project Liberty. He's also the executive chairman of McCord Global. And Frank, let's talk a little bit about what this is. How did you get involved? Why is this such an important project to you? Well, it just... Uh, it, uh, Boy, over the last decade, I've been watching what's happening to this country that I love and, and, uh, and seeing it just get ripped apart. And as we dug deeper into it, we just came to the realization that, uh, you know, the problem here is that this omnipresent, ubiquitous technology that we're all using is actually causing lots of bad things to happen. And uh, we, we've ended up with a highly centralized, autocratic surveillance type of technology, which is really uh, hurting us in so many ways, whether it's young kids and the harms it's doing that are now well documented or just undermining our democracy. I mean, not a day goes by where we don't read some other story of the dysfunction and the inability to, to even be gov governable here. And, and uh, you know, you might ask the question, like, why are our are, are elected officials not doing something about it. Well, well, they're in the same eco, ecosystem, right, that's completely broken and dysfunctional. So as an, as an infrastructure person, by the way, my family's been building infrastructure for 130 years. So we'll, we look at this as an infrastructure design problem. And if we can fix that, we have a shot now of actually using the tech to actually help us solve problems, okay, not create let's problems. Let's get to that, because I, I am with you asking the question, why is Congress unable to pack something like the Kids Online Safety Act, which if you're saying you're opposed to that, what in the world is wrong with you? How can you not get things through? We're using our kids as lab rats with this grand experiment that we know from studies that have been done is causing them harm, makes them feel worse about themselves, leads to all kinds of uh, online bullying and other issues, not to mention child pornography and the you know, sexual assault, basically, that takes place online with these kids. Well, you're talking common sense, right? You're talking, like, as a mom, right? Yeah. That this, we, we need to protect kids. I mean, that's, like, the, the number one responsibility that we have and a society has, protect children. We would never allow this behavior to take place in a Chuck E. Cheese or in a mall or in somewhere in the real world online. Suddenly it's okay if you can get it down to 1% or 2 or 5% of the transactions that are taking place? Unfortunately, what's happened with this technology, it, the design of the tech and then how now in its centralized form, dominated by a few apps, what ends up happening is we, the, the information that they aggregate and apply algorithms to, and by the way, algorithms are just another name for artificial intelligence, so it's not a new thing. These algorithms are designed actually to divide us. And, and, and separate us because and trigger us. Because hate gets a better us. response when you're mad, you spend more time online? Well, if you look, I think the algorithms are working perfectly, right? If an algorithm is designed to keep you online and the way to keep people triggered and defending themselves and then the other person defends themselves and so forth, you are in an endless loop of disagreement, right? 50-50. Everything is like stalemate. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing. So I would say the algorithms are working great. We need to fix that. And um, as far as your... How do, you, how do you do that? How do you fix the algorithm? You, you, again, thinking of this as a, as a, from an infrastructure level, the, the Internet, 40 years ago, there was something, a, a protocol called TCP, IP, that basically connected computers, right? And then we suddenly had this massive computer network. 30 years ago, we, the, the World Wide Web came into being, again, enabled by another protocol, HTTP. And this is when data was, was the name of the game. That data has been sucked up now by a, a few, four or five major companies, you know their names, and they dominate our lives, right? They have the value and they have the control. We believe that another protocol, we call it DSMP, which connects us as people, returns ownership and control of the data to us as individuals, we decide what to do with it. We decide what apps to use. We're not stuck in these walled gardens, and we're not manipulated. You mean this, is, this takes back control from the Googles, from the Apples, from the whoever they may be? Apple has parental controls on things. How is this different? Well, it, it's, it's because we're talking at the core, core infrastructure layer now, right? And so what, what 
Imagine you being in charge now when you log on to the internet. Apple's not in charge. Meta's not in charge. Google or Amazon are not in charge. Okay, what I'll say as a parent is I don't know that I'm even good enough at using the parental controls to... to it's to not a parental things. control issue. It's a matter of just... There'll, there'll be a whole new set of um, services provided in this new world, but the point I'm fundamentally making, un unless and until we would return our data, our property, I would say our personhood in this world, right? Because there's really no difference between your biological DNA and your digital DNA in this life. Until we realize that this has been stripped, our personhood has Anybody been stripped from us. Anybody under 40 doesn't care. They think that their privacy Oh, I, I disagree. I think they're, they're caring a lot now. I think, we're, I, I think what we're seeing real time now is a mass awareness that we have a broken system and it needs to be fixed. But if you've got some of the protocols, let's, like, let's say uh, if you want to be on Instagram or Facebook in Europe and you have to pay $5.99 if you want it to be without ads and without them mining your data, there's a real question as to how many people would actually pay for that. Again, it's not really an issue of, I, I, I would argue that we shouldn't be thinking about this in the terms of the way things work now. We should be thinking about, first we should be acknowledging that we have a broken system, right? We, I think, can acknowledge that. I agree with that. We need to think about how to fix it. I would argue that you fix it from the ground up, and then when you fix it, you have a new paradigm. And we don't, we shouldn't be thinking of things in terms of the way they work now. We should be thinking of them in terms of the way they should work to support kids and protect them and support democracy. Is this something that Congress has to sign off on to go through it? Because if they can't even pass the, you know, Kids Safety Online Act, the idea of them saying, sure, we think there has to be an entirely new infrastructure, which honestly sounds pretty complicated. Well, it's, we, first of all, we don't need Congress to do it. We can innovate our way forward as opposed to But none to of the big, big bucks companies are going to want to do it ah, themselves. Ah. <laughs> okay, now you've hit the nail on the head. Right. right? That's, but the question is, do we sit here and say, mm, big problem, too, sol too difficult to solve, and let this continue with generative AI now? Mm -hmm. By the way, a fancy name for the same technology that, 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 that basically surveils us, grabs our data, applies algorithms. Do we want to continue with a broken system and make it more powerful, or do we want to fix it before this new, wonderful technology is unleashed? The tech is not the problem. How it's designed and used is the problem. But what is the answer? Government regulation to no, force this? or No, no. Like, In because innovation. if it's not big money and if it's not government regulation, I don't know how it gets done. Innovation. Innovation. You actually, remember, <clears throat> 30 years ago, there wasn't the, the system we have now, and people were not... They were asking questions like, what is the internet? What is the World Wide Web? Yeah. Imagine the future differently than the past. And that means a redesign of how this technology works.